I had this like nightmare. It was crazy. But I, I kind of like reevaluated everything I was dreaming in terms of both the negative and both the positive. And I made this very, very, uh, it, I guess you could call it analytical. I, I kind of dissected my whole dream. But anyway, I'm not going to talk about that. That's You can simply watch. It's like a 12-minute video. I literally went through everything I was thinking in my dream. The good, the bad, and the ugly of AMC. Okay. Um, it, it was very intense. It was basically trying to be pop, you know, positive, but at the same time, you know, acknowledging the negative. So it was kind of all over the place, the video I just made. But since I already made that video, I want to talk about how much, how far, and I want to talk about how I really, truly feel this is the answer. You know what the funny thing is, is that I don't think nobody agrees with me. And it's really sad because it's very sad because it seems like to me that all of you don't understand what's happening in this world. And it's really sad. It really, really is sad. We live in a very evil, very corrupt world where most people do not want to see us succeed. That's it. The 1% wants to keep getting richer. They want to, you know, take our money. They want, it's a transfer of wealth from us to them. And they have these platforms set up such as the stock market, okay, and even casinos, okay, and I, mean, I could go on and on and on, and the idea is to take our money, that's what it's all about, take our money, but for some reason, and I don't know what it is, this is the choice that most of you, and honestly, most of the country keeps taking, they keep taking it. It's like Donald Trump just recently made a video not too long ago. And he was saying most of his billionaire friends who invested in the stock market lost around 50% of their net worth. Now, he was saying that they weren't investing in these fly-by-night companies. They weren't investing in these high-risk companies. They were investing in conservative. Like, just look at, like, what's happening with Tesla, for instance. I mean, the last I checked, the thing was down to like 170 a share. Look at what happened with Amazon. I mean, so we could go on and on and on. People have invested in top, top companies, top blue chip companies, and still lost a fortune, okay? So the thing is, you ask yourself, if these big, gigantic, conglomerate blue chip companies, right, are failing, how do we expect any of these smaller companies that have loads of debts, loads of problems, how are they going to succeed, right? <laughs> so it, it, you almost ask yourself, what am I doing here? You know, putting my money in uh, fly-by-night companies, I'm putting my money in co companies that Warren Buffett would invest in, and in both case scenarios, it seems like I'm losing money, not doing well. Um, you know, the thing is I did well with gold only because I got involved with it a long, long, long time ago. Like if you started investing in gold now, of course, there's a risk. You could lose money. I mean, it's that it's like, it's that's all time high. You know what I mean? I got it a long, a long time ago. Okay. So I, see, see, that's, that always seems to be the case. It always seems to be the case where, you know, when you get involved with something, which is going to get to my point, at the ground floor level, meaning you have the foresight, you're the visionary. You have the foresight to say, this is going to be something that's going to be big. And you get involved. Those are always the people who seem to get the most, who seem to do the best. Okay? The people who get in late, the people who are, as, as, as you all love to say, FOMO by are always the ones who lose, are always the one to bank hold. You know, I once read this this quote by uh, Warren Buffett. He goes, we never invested a stock for 10 minutes. He says that I wasn't willing to invest in for 10 years. 
Okay, that was a quote that he said. So it's kind of like very, very long term, the stock market. And, you know, I think we all came into AMC for the quick buck. We all came into AMC hoping that this was going to be the Moaz and this was going to be the biggest thing since Volkswagen. But it's turning out now to be the complete opposite, which I covered in my last video of what we thought it was. And it's not to say, you, you know, you want to know something? It's not to say you still can't make money in AMC. You know, it, it's not to say that you can't hope for the best. Of course, if the company gets out of debt and the company becomes financially sound and fundamentally good, there's a potential you could make money with it. So I'm not saying anything as of right now, in terms of what my plans are with AMC, I know a lot of people gave up. I know, I know a lot of people sold. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But that's not the point of this live stream. Point in this live stream is that my mindset, at least me, none of you, I don't think, think like me. None of you think like me, and that's fine. That's that's okay. <laughs> But my mindset is to create an atmosphere for everyone. And by the way, not just for apes, okay? For everyone to live and enjoy life like a millionaire. And, and, and in, what, in one way, I kind of don't want people to join. You want to laugh? I don't want people to join how much, how far. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because once I actually establish it, I think I could charge separate memberships. Or even memberships may not even be the answer. Um, like I'll give you an example. So let's say I construct and I develop the eight mansion. Now, obviously, I realize there's going to be zoning laws. Um, even though I'm thinking of this as a residential like, in other words, a mansion, a residential project, there may be a possibility it might be commercial. Because, see, in my mind, I see it having all these different elements. And I'm going to have to probably sit down, you know, with, with, with zoning laws and, and, and really speaking to a lot of attorneys about this. Because the way I see it is like this. I see it having, like, the... Uh, Elements of about several different things, the eight mansion. The first thing is, it's kind of similar to a strip club. In the sense that you're going to have people, beautiful women dressed up like Amazon goddesses. And you're going to have them dancing and, you know, depending on the laws of New Jersey, how much they can reveal is completely uh, going to be based on the laws of New Jersey and all that stuff, okay? I see it having a liquor license. I see, you know, obviously, I'm just, I'm just telling what I'm envisioning. I'm envisioning the poles, these Amazon girls dressed up as if it's the jungle, dancing for us. Obviously, uh, no different than any other strip club. There's going to be uh, opportunities for the uh, private rooms and and the lap dances. So I'm starting to think to myself, <clears throat> maybe even the membership is not the right way to go. Maybe just make this like a la carte. You know what I mean? Where people come in, no different than going to any other strip club, and they pay a la carte. They pay, uh, you know, they pay a fee to come in. You know, they give the girls the tips. They pay for the lap dances. They pay for the, uh, the you know, if you go into the uh, the private room. Okay, once again, 100% keeping it according to the law. Now, see, I don't, now let's talk about other elements that I see in my mind. I'm envisioning the eight mansion. Might be a little bit of like a commercial project. You know, even though it's designed as a house, it might be more commercial. I see it having, <clears throat> excuse me. I see it having an element of like the Playboy Mansion, 
like you Hefner, where there's going to be an outdoor section. Like in other words, there's going to be a big gigantic pool. There's going to be entertainment, like a DJ, big gigantic heated gorilla pool. There's going to be a heated hot tub. There's going to be chefs that are going to prepare different meals. And I'm thinking about it, maybe it would be better to keep all of this a la carte. So in other words, people just walk into this place, they enjoy the strip club, like the Mata Bing. You understand? They enjoy it. Now they'd sit down by the pool and they order themselves dinner. You know, and they pay for it. They pay for the steak. They pay for the wine. They pay for the alcohol. They pay for everything. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe this whole membership thing might not even... See, because you don't realize that I ultimately will do better. You understand? Financially, okay? I will ultimately do better doing all of this without all of you. I'll ultimately do do better on my own, just opening this. Now you might say, how are you going to fund it? L- listen to me. I actually have a lot of money, okay? I know a lot of you don't realize. I'm expecting even more money. I'm expecting money. And on top of all of this, I'm continuing w- w- with my YouTube career. Very fast, rapid rate. So all of this could become a reality in a year or so or possibly less. And meaning meaning without your help, without your assistance, I could do all of this myself. And if you re- really want me to be honest with you, okay, it might be more financially benefiting for me to do this by myself. Like I'm actually envisioning this in Atlantic City. I'm envisioning this in Atlantic City. Atlantic City, you know, this might be the perfect location for the eight mansion. Okay, because just just in that area in general, you do have the right to have a strip club. You do have the right, you know, to have a situation like this where uh, it's going to be similar to like the play. Like there was actually a concept that was called the, the Playboy Club. The Playboy Club. And uh, it were it was a major major success in Las Vegas. So you can have a situation like this in Atlantic City, where it's kind of like a strip club, but yet it's kind of like it's got a restaurant, it's got you know facilities where there's the pool, where there's the hot tub. But you might say, well, what makes this different than a casino? It's going to be more of an intimate setting. What's up, AFC Bank? All the guy says. Um, you want you want to know the thing about the lawsuit, brother? <clears throat> yes, there's a possibility we could win. Yes, there's a possibility that everything can be delayed. Okay, the ten for the one for ten reverse stock split. Um, they can be, they can continue to delay it. They can continue to delay the conversion from APE to AMC. But if you want me to feel, tell you the, the truth, the truth, I am just at a point with my AMC shares now, where as of right now, I'm not really doing much with it. I'm holding. I'm really not going crazy anymore with accumulating more, I kind of want to see where we're going to go. I kind of want to see what's going to happen with it. You know what I mean? Because right now there's a, like I'll say it in my video, it's all a big, it's all a big question mark. It's all a big, um, it's all a big like a uh, guessing game at this point. It's all a big guessing game. And um, if this 10 for one reverse stock, you know, split goes through, and we do lose 90% of our shares. I made a video, you should watch it. I tried to make an optimistic point of view. I really did. I tried to, I tried to keep it positive in the sense that the company gets out of debt, in the sense that it becomes fundamentally better, in the sense that it might attract new investors now because the company is fundamentally strong. 
Now, I get it. I understand what all of you are going to say. But hey, Father, more delusion. We lost 90% of our shares. How do we know they're not going to short the living shit out of this thing? Uh, Terra, you know, or, uh, Citadel. And the question is, we don't know. We don't know. See, it's very hard. You know, I watch a lot of people's videos on this subject. I watch a lot of different uh, AFC YouTubers. And it, it's basically comprised of people who are completely negative and completely positive. So what I decided to do with it, right, is kind of like meet everybody in the middle. And I don't know how, a lot of people seem to be critical of me that I'm trying to keep an open mind. I'm trying to keep an open mind because look, I have a lot of money at stake here. I'm down, I'm down a lot of money. So it's really not in my best interest to be completely and utterly negative. You, you understand? See, people like Lou, people like Lou, who owns no AMC, he never did. He never owned one single share of money. You ever notice that throughout this whole process of us watching AMC go from $73 a share down to under $5 a share? You ever notice how Lou's never upset? You ever, you ever notice how Lou's not stressed out? And there's a reason for this. It's because he has nothing at risk. He doesn't own AMC. He, he never did from the beginning. He never did at any point during his YouTube channel. And he doesn't own it now. You might say to yourself, but hey, Father, why does he make so many AMC videos? He makes a lot of AMC videos because the true motivation for Lou is to make ad revenue on YouTube, okay? And he just talks to all of you like you're a bunch of brain-dead friggin' mongoloids, you know, and he just keeps talking <laughs> and making up stories and everybody keeps viewing him and he's cashing in on making ad revenue on YouTube. This dude doesn't own any AMC. He doesn't own AMC. Listen, I come from Brooklyn. You don't think I could tell a con man? I know a con man, believe me. Lose a con man, okay? But there's nothing I can do about it. Look, for whatever the reason is, you all love watching this guy. You all love listening to this guy. This guy has done nothing but cost everybody money. That's it. Started with Clove, where he claimed it was going to go to $500 a share. AMC, you know, the true price of it, the dark pools, 4000 5000 10000 a share. You know, Sundow, RNVA, GTII. <laughs> Listen, this guy has done nothing but destroy lives. That's all Lou has done. But for some odd reason, I don't understand it. I don't think I ever will. It's one of the very gigantic mysteries of the universe. People keep watching Lou. Now, I don't know if it's that he's cheating. This is the thing. Is it possible that Lou is buying his subs? You know, is it possible? See, a lot of people like Mo Money investing. He makes good points, my brother. You know, he's like, hey, father, he only retained about 15% of his viewership. Now, that's true. Because Lou used to have over 80,000 subscribers which currently he has 11,006. Lou used to have over like something like 73 million views and currently is about at 4.2 mil, a little over 4.2 million views. So you could also argue a lot of people deserted Lou, right? You could argue that. But still, he's actually not doing bad. In the short period, I think he opened up his channel, what, what was it, in January, right? I'm talking about the second channel after his first channel was vaporized. The guy's getting a lot of effing views. He's almost at, he's heading to 5 million views. So I really don't understand that. And I'm not going to try to figure it out. Look, the way I see it is this. You want to watch Lou? Watch Lou. Okay? I got bigger plans. I got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> okay? I got bigger fish to fry. 
And like I said, you know what the funny thing is that these haters don't understand? Everybody is calling me the beg father. This is what they're calling me. They, they call me the beg father. These people don't understand, right? I'm actually trying to do them a favor. And I'm, at, I'm getting to a point with all of you, if you want me to tell you the truth, I'm getting to a point where I'm getting very, very sick. And I'm getting very, very tired of these haters. I really am. Because what these people simply don't understand, I'm living a great life. They don't understand this, these people. They just, they don't get it. They don't understand I have a beautiful house. I have tons of money. I'm eating out every night. I do whatever I want. I have no boss. I am my own boss. I make my own hours. I live. See, to you, you may not think I live like a rock star, but when you can wake up anytime you want and you can go out and eat a ribeye steak cooked medium with uh, cream spinach, baked potatoes, asparagus, stellas, wine, you understand? You could go into your hot tub. You can relax, you can unwind, take a swim in your pool, which is going to be very soon now. I'm going to be opening up my pool very soon. Um, I got a $75,000 in-ground swimming pool. You know, I got a beautiful hot tub, seven-person hot tub. See, what these haters don't understand is I'm living a very good life. And I don't know why they keep referring to me as the beg father, because... The thing is that I'm not begging you for right. I'm actually, you know what they don't understand because their freaking braids are the size of pigeons, these haters. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a lot of sinuses here. All right, Jesse, you're being a wise ass again, Jesse. You're being a wise ass. All right. We're going to talk about AMC too. Look, I know a lot of people want to talk about AMC. I'm going to talk about AMC, but I'm trying to make a point that I don't think none of you understand. The stock market is corrupt, okay? I'm trying to make a point, and I don't think a lot of you want to hear this, okay? The stock market is controlled by the 1%. Some people call them the Illuminati. Some people call them the world order, the new world order. Look, I'm going to say it's all alleged because I have to to protect myself. But there's things going on with the most powerful people in the world. Politicians, entrepreneurs, businessmen, billionaires. Okay. They control what's going on with stock market. And it's like I keep seeing people like all these retail investors and they're always complaining, you know. I'm angry at this. I'm angry... I've been had, I've been tricked, I've been screwed. And a lot of times I notice they're blaming one person, you know, Adam Aaron. That's who they're blaming. They're saying it's his fault. But you sometimes I don't feel you have the intellect to understand that this is bigger than Adam Aaron. Adam Aaron is small fish. Adam Aaron answers to a much bigger power, okay? And there is a potential that he may have arrangements Okay, that none of you understand with very, very powerful, powerful people. And there can be a lot of things happening in this circle of corruption that we're not in that we don't know about. So now this, again, I'm going to say it's alleged, all of this. This is subject to my opinion. But this is why I'm trying to take a different approach. And nobody understands it. But unfortunately, because a lot of you have the brains of a pigeon. You're continuing to give money to this rig system. That's what it is. You just keep doing it. You keep doing it over. It, it, it's almost like, let me give you an analogy, right? It's almost like you go to this beautiful girl's house, gorgeous girl, and you want you want to you know, you want to bang her. You right? You want to have sex with this girl. Okay, so you go there, and as soon as you walk in. She steals all the money out of your wallet. Let's say you got $1,000. She takes all your money, she steals it, and you don't have sex. She kicks you in your friggin' balls. 
And then ultimately she pulls out a friggin' uh, machete and she chases you out of uh, her apartment. So you run out screaming and uh, she stole the $1,000 of your money. Now, you would probably think that you would have the common sense and the logic to not go back, right, to that girl's apartment. She just stole the thousand dollars of your money. She was ready to chop off your balls with a machete. But this is the thing: you go back again. You go back a second time with the thousand dollars in your pocket, and the girl laughs to herself, saying, "What a what a friggin' uh, Mama Luke stew now this guy is." She does the same exact thing. She pulls out the thousand dollars. She steals it again from you. Pulls out the machete. Chases you out of the apartment. And uh, once again, you were robbed. You got no sex. You got no satisfaction. You were robbed. Now, you would think that at that point, you would say, I think I had enough, right? I'm done with this. I'm not doing this no more. But you go back a third time. And you go back a fourth time. Because you're hoping and praying that one day, this beautiful, sexy girl is going to take her hot, sexy panties off. And she's going to give it to you like they do on the uh, Discovery Channel. You keep having that hope. You keep having that that dream. And I think that's what's happening with people in the stock market. You know, you keep having this hope. You keep having this dream of the Moaz. You keep having this dream that you're going to hit it big and you're going to get into the stock right at the perfect time. And you're going to ride it up and make a fortune. But like I said, Donald Trump just made a video not too long ago. Most of the friends that he has. Now, I'm not even talking about retail. I just want to be perfectly clear with all of you. I am not talking about retail. I'm talking about billionaires have been losing 50% of their net worth in the stock market. And, and not even investing in fly-by-night companies. Investing in conservative companies. Tesla. Amazon. Okay. So I'm just trying to make you understand that the stock market is controlled by huge, huge, powerful people. More powerful than any politician. More powerful than the President of the United States of America more powerful than billionaires. And I think I know who they are. Let's just say that the letter starts with R. <laughs> the family. I'm not going to say what it is, okay? I give. I just give you a little hint there. That, that, that It starts with the letter R, okay? I, I'm not going to go there. It's not the Rockefeller family, no. It's not the Rockefeller family. But, but I'm very, very highly confident. See, people don't realize this, that the family I'm referring to has so much money, you have absolutely no idea. You think Elon Musk is rich. You think uh, Elon Musk is rich. Take Elon Musk and times it by 100. Times it by 1,000. I'm not even kidding you. This family has that much control and money. The family I'm talking about. But I can't reveal it because if I say the name of the family, YouTube will immediately shut my channel down. That is how powerful this family is. They'll shut me down. They will completely ban me from YouTube. Okay? I'm not saying it. You could, you could, listen, you could think whatever it is you want right. You may be right and you may be wrong, but I'm not confirming it. Because the second I open my mouth, and I say the name of this family, YouTube, ha it, it already happened. I was on the phone one time with Cassidy uh, Campbell, the, you know, the, the, the big YouTuber, right? And he made, he made videos calling out this family. And they literally shut him down. They threatened to, to close his, you can ask him if you don't believe me. They threatened to close his YouTube channel down if he ever did it again. And they, and they removed the videos, okay? So, I'm not going to mention the name of the family. But anyway, getting back. How much, how far is something I honestly don't care anymore if you want to do it or not. I'm actually better off doing it myself. If you want to hear the truth, 
it makes more financial sense. It makes more financial sense for me to fund this myself, open up the aid mansion. But like I said, it might be more of a commercial project. Put it somewhere in Atlantic City, okay? And, you know, will gaming be involved? It's possible. I'm not sure yet. There may be a portion of it that will be a gaming. But the idea of it is really to make a Playboy Club similar. Similar, like I, I, I envision this to be very similar to you, Hefner, and, uh, you know, the Playboy Mansion. And to give, I might keep everything a, a la carte, where you know something, it's pay as you go. No membership, people come in, they pay for the lap dances, they pay for the private rooms, they pay for the alcohol, they pay for the use of all the, all the uh, there's going to be so many things there. There's going to be so many things. And I might keep it like that. I really, really might keep it like that. So you might say to yourselves, hey, Paul, I don't understand. I thought you wanted us to, to be a part of this. I do. But the thing is, I'm not going to fight all of you. I'm not going to fight all of you. See, I have big dreams. And the thing is that I want to be my own boss. I want to be you know, in control. I don't want someone controlling me. I don't want Ken Griffin with all his payment for order flow platforms controlling me. I don't want that. See, to me, I want to be like Larry Flint. You understand? I want to be like Tony Soprano. That, that, that's, that's just me. Now, if you all want to be controlled, you all want to continue to give your money. See, what all of you don't understand Whenever you buy and sell stock on a payment for order flow platform such as Webull, such as Robinhood, you're making Ken Griffin, Ken Griffin richer. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. And it seems to me that all of you want to continue to do this. <laughs> so that's why, look, here's the bottom line with how much, how far. Okay. If you want to do it, you would have to have two things in mind if you wanted to be a member. It's going to take me time to open the first eight mansion, which could be in Atlantic City. It could be considered commercial. Now, as a member, you wouldn't have to pay for anything. That's the thing. You wouldn't have to pay for anything. You get. I mean, the only thing you might have to do, you might have to tip the girls. You, you might have to tip them. That, 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 that's, that's the thing, okay? There's no, remember in life, there's no way out of tipping. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? There's no way out. You got to tip people. You got to tip waiters. You got to tip the waitresses. You got to tip the dancers. But ultimately, everything else, as a member, you would have full use of the facilities. And the idea is to live like a millionaire. That's the idea. In other words, the next step would be to have a raceway where there's Lamborghinis, where there's Ferraris, okay, where we all get a chance to, to test drive the most luxurious, beautiful cars. And again, this would be part of a membership. The next step would be there would be a yacht, okay, very similar to the eight mansion. You would have girls dressed up, as uh, Amazon goddesses, they're there, they're there to entertain you. You know, it's it, 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 in other words, it, it, all, it all works out to be the same thing. Now, if enough people would pay this $9.99 membership, we could do this very quickly. We could all party together like rock stars. But I have a feeling nobody's going to do it. So at the end result, here's what's going to happen. Eight Father's going to finance it, finance it himself. That's all. And you know what's going to be funny? You're going to notice at some point, you're going to all regret it. You're going to all regret it. You're going to see the Eight Father on a big yacht. Here's what's going to happen. I'm telling you, look, I can't wait to shove this up all of your friggin' buttholes. Okay. 
I am going to make all of you feel so stupid and so puty. You're going to, you're, you're going to, you're, you, I can't wait. I cannot wait for the day. You have no idea. I can't effing wait for the day. I'm going to make videos where you're going to see me on this big, gigantic yacht with beautiful women partying like a rock star. Drinking Patron, smoking Cuban cigars, eating friggin' the best gourmet food, living like an effing royalty king. Okay. And you're going to see me in the eight mansion. And you're going to see me driving the Lamborghinis. I got to lose some weight for that. And you know what you're going to say to yourself? If I would have just spent $9.99, this is what you're going to say to yourself. I could have been doing all of this. I could have been on a yacht. I could have been cruising the Caribbean with my girlfriend or my wife. I could be eating porterhouse steaks. I could be drinking Don Perignon. I could be smoking Cuban cigars. I could have been doing all of this. I could have been like, driving all the best cars. I could be putting big coats on my girl. I could be putting diamond necklaces on her. I could have the best suits, the best jewelry, everything. In other words, it's called sharing my lifestyle. Like I have a $10,000 watch. It's called sharing my lifestyle. Okay. Now the thing is, most likely none of you are going to do this. I have not gotten one single member to join how much how far. Now, as I explained, if someone did join, obviously only having one member, right? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. Only having one member, I would not be able to purchase any of these assets. So what I said was, in the meantime, while we're waiting to accumulate enough members for me to accumulate assets. Once again, these assets, you will not have an ownership interest in. This whole thing is very similar to a timeshare. Very, very similar to a timeshare. You just have use of the assets. The thing is this. At some point, I would have to give you something. Because think about it. If someone is giving me $9.99, right? And yet I have no eight mansion, I have no Ferraris, I have no Lamborghinis, I have no yachts, that person is going to get very pissed off, okay? So the two things that I would start to do on an immediate level until we get enough members, okay, would be I would do members-only videos. Here's the first gift. Members-only videos. So you're going to have access to some of the most hysterical content on YouTube. I will personally go to bars. I will personally wear my Hooters outfit. I will do things that are absolutely hysterical. Now, these videos are only going to be accessible to members of How Much How Far. I'm going to give all of you shout outs. I'm going to do personalized videos for all of you. I'm going to take requests. Like you might say, hey, Father, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this crazy prank? Why don't you do this crazy thing? All of these videos that I'm going to make are going to be for members only. And another thing I'm going to do is the food challenges. See, now that's something I can pretty much do right away. You understand? Helping people who are in financial need by doing the food challenges. So the idea would be to stick to those two things. The food challenges and the um, and the uh, members only videos until we get to a point where there's thousands and thousands and thousands of members. Okay, now that's when we could start thinking big. That's when I could start saying, "Let me start accumulating assets." Okay, of which all of us could use. But like I said, I don't care if you don't do it. I'm being honest with all. I, I want, it's actually, it's better off for me if none of you do this. It really is. See, that's what you don't understand. Like, you're calling me a beg father. You're calling me the scam father. 
you're calling me the grifter. What you don't understand is I'm trying to do all of you a favor. I'm trying to do all of you a favor because this is the point I'm trying to make. You came into AMC ultimately, I think, because you wanted life-changing wealth. You came into AMC, I think, because I did, because you want to live like a rock star, okay? And that's what I'm trying to do. How much, how far is supposed to be a plan B? It's supposed to be a plan B for all of us to drive Lamborghinis, all of us to drive Ferraris, all of us to have the best jewelry, clothing, food, partying with the hottest women dressed up in Amazon outfits, like they're out of the frigid jungle, yachts, helicopters, planes. That's what how much our far is supposed to be. It's supposed to be an opportunity for the average Joe who doesn't have that much money to live like an effing millionaire. And let me tell you something. This idea is never going to be offered again. That's it. So I got I got good news for all of you. And I got bad news. You want to hear the good news and the bad news? Okay. The good news, you could all keep your $9.99. Keep it. Listen to me. Keep that nine, keep that nine dollars. Keep it. I want you to. I want you to keep that nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay. I want you to go out. I want you to buy yourself a gallon of milk with it. I want you to maybe get yourself a tuna fish sandwich. I don't know what can you really buy with nine dollars and ninety-nine cents, right? <laughs> I want you to go out there and spend it on whatever you want to get. Because when you see me within a year or less from now on a multi-million dollar yacht, when you see me <laughs> eating the best foods, which by the way, I do now, by the way, I'm always eating good even right now. But when you see me partying in mansions, driving Lamborghinis, Bentleys, Porsche, well, maybe not a Porsche, I'm a little too big for that. Um, Rolls Royce Phantoms, my box, okay? Going all around the nation, all around the country, eating at the greatest restaurants, living like an effing king. I want you to know that I'm going to give all of you daily reminders that that could have been you for $9.99 a month. Like, and, I'm, and I am gonna rub it in. Oh, oh, you have no idea. You have no idea how much I'm going to break your balls. I'm going to leave people in tears. I'm going, I am, I am going to leave people in tears. <laughs> this guy, see, once again, here's a guy, right? Who who breaks my balls. Cars are not the most important thing to people, brother. Listen to me. I could afford 10 Escalades, <laughs> okay? I could afford to buy 10 of them. You understand? Instead, I like to keep what's called liquidity. You understand? I have a tremendous, tremendous amount of cash liquid, okay? I have a tremendous, tremendous amount of gold liquid, Okay, you think I can't buy an Escalade? I can buy ten of them. Okay, but let me ask you a question since you're so smart, Michael. You're a smart guy, right? Okay, let's say I go out and I buy an Escalade. The second I drive it off, okay, the friggin' car dealership, it's gonna lose about ten thousand dollars in value. It's gonna lose instantly, and then the more and more I drive it, the wear and tear. The, the car is going to depreciate and depreciate and depreciate a value. Okay. So maybe to you, you think that's smart. For each is their own. Me, I'd rather be cash rich. Okay. My GMC Arcadia is, is, is fine for me. I don't care what any of you say. I got, I got the, friggin', the, the double frigate sunroof. 
I got the Bose system. It drives like a, a, a friggin' uh, a beautiful woman. The car's beautiful. Okay, so I'm not here. Listen to me. It's not an excuse. Brother, it's not an excuse. Listen to me. You're all nuts. I've shown proof. I have a million dollars coming in. Bro, I have, I have, listen, I'm not going to argue with you people anymore. Listen, I'm not going to argue with you. Look, I'll tell you what. Look, you can think whatever you want of me. Here's what the reality is. I wake up whenever I want. I don't work. I don't have a boss. I have more money than I can spend. I eat out every single night. I spend every waking moment with my family. Who, who could do that? Who could do that? That I have the opportunity. I'm always with my family. I'm always with my wife. I'm always with my children. We live great lives. I have a backyard oasis. I have a $75,000 rig ground pool. I have a seven person hot tub. Bro, I'm doing fine. Listen, you could keep abusing me. You could keep making fun of me and you have the right to do so. But it doesn't change the fact that within the next month, I'll be drinking Dom Perignon in my friggin' hot tub. I'll be swimming in my gi gigantic in-ground swimming pool, okay? And I'm going to be eating at the best restaurants. I'm going to be on the beach partying. So listen, it's all good. Have your opinions of me. Have your opinions of me, brother. <laughs> it's it's fine. If it listen, it, if it gives you an erection at night, if it makes you feel good about yourself to abuse a guy who's living like a king, then I'll tell you what. God bless. God bless. Listen, Michael. Michael. You talk a great game. You talk. You talk a great game, brother. But here's the thing. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how you're living, bro. Make a video. Let me see your house. Let me see your cash liquidity. Let me see how you're living, brother. Let's see what you're driving, which you probably, if it's an Escalade, knowing you, you're probably leasing it. Okay. You're probably paying freaking $1,300 a month. L listen to me. Let's see how you're living. Okay. Let's see how you're living. You notice I notice a lot of people talk a great, great game. Yeah, you like your privacy. It's probably because your privacy is your excuse. You know what your excuse is? Your privacy is that you're dirt poor. That 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 that's your excuse. That's your excuse. You're you're probably married to a wildebeest. You're probably driving a freaking used fucking Mazda that's got four hundred thousand miles on it. You're probably living in a basement with your mom and your dad. Okay, so keep your privacy. Keep your privacy. <laughs> I noticed that most people who insult me, you have a reputation to uphold. Yeah, I'm sure you do. See, what you don't understand is this. Okay. Do you want to know why, how much, how far makes sense? Listen to me. Let's say I buy a Ferrari. Just, just listen to me. Listen to me. Let's say I buy a Lamborghini. Now let's say we we I have a raceway. Okay. It doesn't matter to me that the cars I'm going to buy, these exotic luxury cars, are going to depreciate in value. Do you want to know why it's not going to matter to me? Because people are going to be paying me, okay, in income. I am going to have an income. Because people are going to come to this raceway and they're going to pay. This is it. I don't need none of you. I'm going to do all of this myself. Listen, I don't need none of you. Okay. What's going to happen is this people are going to come and pay me to race that Lamborghini around the raceway. People are going to come and pay me and they're going to race the, 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 the Ferrari. They're going to they're gonna have fun. And I'm going to have an income. So because I'm going to have a constant income, I don't care if the car depreciates in value because I'm getting constant money from it.
See, that's what you're not understanding. Like, 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 let me give you the difference between me and Teddy Zane. Okay. Teddy Zane buys a Corvette, right? A brand new Corvette. As soon as he drives it off the lot, the Corvette loses about $10,000 in value. Okay. Now, Teddy Zane, maybe he doesn't drive it that much, but the more and more wear and tear that Teddy Zane is putting on this car, it just keeps going lower and lower. I understand it maintains its value to, to a certain degree, but it still depreciates in value. A car is not a good investment, okay? But if you're doing it in terms of a business, you understand the difference? If you're doing it in terms of a business where you're making an income from the use of these cars, then the depreciation no longer matters because you're making more money than the depreciation, okay? It's the same exact concept with boats. Boats are a depreciating asset, big time. But if people are paying you, you understand, to take these boats out, you understand, and to rent them, and you're getting an income from it, it doesn't matter that the boats are depreciating, okay? It's the same concept as a private club. Listen to me. It's the same thing as a private club. If people are paying you either a membership, in other words, to be in part of a private club, or you're getting an income simply from people buying food, alcohol, lap dances, um, private rooms. Okay. So, see, what you're not understanding about my ideas Here's what you're not understanding. My ideas have what's called the best of two worlds. And can I explain to you what the best of two worlds are? Okay. You're, you're enjoying very luxury items. You understand? But you're making money while you're enjoying these things. That's the key. And you know where I learned that from? Donald Trump. Donald Trump taught this to me. See, I'll give you an example. Donald Trump first bought Mar Mar-a-Lago, and it was his private residence. People don't know this. It was his private residence in West Palm Beach, Florida. He, he, he came to the conclusion it was too much money. It really was. It was an insane amount of money to just keep that mother effer going. So what he did was he turned it into a private club where people are paying, paying an annual membership to be there. I think it's like $300,000 a year. And they get to use all of the, uh, you know, things, the, the pool, the ballroom, the dining room. I'm not sure exactly how it works. If, there were, if, if dinner is included, I think it might be. I think it's like a timeshare. I think they go there a certain period of time a year. I would assume that there's a lot of things included in the membership. It's the same thing he does with his golf courses. You understand? People have a membership. They have a membership to his golf courses. Okay. But you see, you know what's great about Donald Trump that I love? I'm going to tell you what it is. He's enjoying all of these assets because he's developing them. You understand? So he's enjoying his golf clubs. He's enjoying Mar-a-Lago, which is now his, his residence, while people are paying him. Do you understand the concept? He's enjoying all the luxury assets, but people are paying him a membership fee. Okay, so that's what I want to do. Very, very similar. Good morning. Michael, listen to me. The stock market sucks. Listen to me, listen to me. I hate to break it to you, brother. The stock market sucks bull sack. I have made so much money in my life with real estate. I have made so much money in my life from gold. And can I tell you something, brother? If I could turn back time, I wouldn't even have invested in AMC. If, 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 if there was some way that I could go back into an effing time machine and get my $200,000 back, I would have put it into frigging gold, 
Okay. Do you have any idea how much money? I'm up 300000 on my house. I'm up a tremendous amount of money on gold. A tremendous amount of money. And I'm cash rich. I have a tremendous amount of cash. So you guys could all take the stock market and shove it up your friggin' asses. The stock market is corrupt. The stock market is rigged. And you know what? The only choice I have right now is to hold. That's my only choice. Because I got played like friggin' Liberace plays the piano. Adam Aaron screwed me. Okay, this effing corrupt stock market screwed me. And I'm down a tremendous amount of money. But if you all think that I'm stupid enough in my life to do that again, you're all crazy. I don't want nothing to do with the stock market. Look, here's the only thing I am doing. You want to know what I'm doing? I'm accumulating GameStop. And I'll tell you the reason why. I really, really believe that GameStop is going to get to like $80 to $100 a share over the next five years. Okay. And I am loading up the boat with GameStop. GameStop to me is my plan B of getting back my money from AMC. That's what GameStop is to me. Because I'm already down a tremendous amount on AMC. I got a tremendous amount of shares, by the way. I have a ridiculous amount of shares with AMC. But the problem is I'm about to lose 90% of the right? brain. <laughs> That's the problem. But let's, let, let's leave that for another conversation. But GameStop, to me, is my uh, plan B of recovering my AMC losses. That's just what I'm doing. I am not telling you what to do. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. All of you have to do what is best for you. That's it. Don't listen to me. You do what's best for you, Okay. People are talking about Bed Bath & Beyond right now. Go for it if you think that's the winner. People have certain penny stocks. People have certain um, plays. They feel that's the winners. Do it. <coughs> I've, owned, um, I've owned three houses in my life. And um, I've accumulated very, very large amounts of cash from the three houses that I've owned in my life, okay? Upwards of over a half a mil. Look, I did all of this myself with no one's help. People think that my father helped me. My, no one helped me. I did all of this myself. <clears throat> Look, I understand that there's a lot of people who don't like GameStop. And once again... You're entitled to your opinion. Look, when I bought GameStop, it was around $16 a share. And uh, I mean, I bought it before that, but I sold it and then I rebought it. Um, people all told me I was crazy. They said to me, it was like something like $16.80, a $16.90 a share, whatever it was. People said, hey, father, it's going down to like $10 a share. I didn't listen to them. I jumped in. I'm in the green, and I'm doing well. Mike, listen, don't, 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 don't listen, Mike, can, can I be honest with you, brother? The conversation of this live stream is not to dissect my finances. Listen to me. Worry about your finances. <laughs> okay, listen to me. Worry about your net worth. Worry about how much money you have coming in. Okay, that's it. Don't worry about me. I'm okay, brother. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Worry, worry, worry about you. That's what you got to worry about. Okay. Don't worry about me. Now, getting back. I think people are misunderstanding what how much how far is. This is what I think is happening. I think that all of you think that how much, how far is some sort of a scam I'm looking to run. It's some sort of a grift. It's it's some sort of a way for me to get your money, right? This is what you're all thinking, right? Okay. You're not understanding something. I'm looking to do all of you a favor. 
See, this is what you're not understanding. I'm looking to do all of you a favor. Because if you listen to me, okay, for the rest of your life and for the rest of your family's life on planet Earth, you will all be living like a multi, multi millionaire if you would listen to me. If let's say you would stop being so close minded, if let's say you would stop being such mama lukes, you would see in a very, very short period of time that you're going to be always on yachts. You're going to have limos driving you all around the place. You're going to have the best food, the best chefs in the world. You're going to be partying with your family in private clubs, eight mansions nationwide. You're going to live an amazing, amazing life. And you want to know what? Anything else that now, now that you do on the side, you invest in the stock market, you invest in real estate, whatever it is that you do, that's all now going to be extra. That's going to be for you to keep now for your kids' college uh, tuitions. That's going to be for you to save. That's going to be all yours, okay? Because you're already going to have the, the, the rock star lifestyle being a part of how much how far. But unfortunately, you don't see it that way. And you know what's going to be funny? What I would, You know what I would like to do? I'd like to do a comparison of my life versus your life. I think this is, I'm going to start a segment. We're going to start, we're going to start a new video segment on the Ape Fathers channel. Okay. It's going to be, let's compare Ape Fathers life to his haters life. And we're going to be doing this annually. Okay. We're going to do this annually. Okay. So one year from now, because I'm going to be on YouTube for the rest of my life, okay? One year from now, and I really wish that the haters would agree to this, but I know that none of you are going to agree to it because you're all a bunch of fucking chickens, okay? You're not going to agree to it. One year from now, I have to make a video how my life improved. You understand? You have to make a video on how your life improved one year from now, okay? So one year from now, here's what you're gonna see. I'm going to make a video of this beautiful, gigantic mansion that's gonna have a gorilla pool, that's gonna have a gorilla hot tub, that's gonna have everything you could possibly imagine in it, okay? Then I want you to make a video <laughs> and show me where you're living. You know, like Commander 35, how he had the garbage pail door. He had a door that had a garbage pail on it, okay? Then he replaced it with a door that looked worse than the garbage bag, okay? So what I want you to, then to do is film a video of how your life progressed. And then as more time goes on, I'm going to buy a multi-billion dollar yacht and I'm going to film it. You're going to see me on the yacht. You're going to see me drinking Dom Perignon. You're going to see women that are basically going to be dressed up as Amazon goddesses. They're going to be massaging my body, massaging my feet. They're going to be serving me grapes. I'm going to be eating grapes, okay? And then I want you to film what you're doing in your life. Now, what I'm going to tell you at that point is this. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, if you actually listen to me, you would be joining me right now with these beautiful women dressed up as Amazon goddesses. And you also would be eating grapes, drinking Dom Perignon, and eating porterhouse steaks. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So do me a big favor, all of you. Don't join. Don't, I, I, don't, I don't even care anymore. Like, see, you won't think I'm begging you. No, 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 no. I'm not begging you. It is to my best interest that none of you join How Much How Far. It is your loss, listen to me, it is your loss to not join this membership for $9.99 a month. Look, like, listen, listen, once again, you guys can keep abusing me. All I read in the comments is this, GoFundMe scams, 
this scam I committed. Okay, let me ask you a question. If I committed all these scams that all of you claim, right? You claim I committed all these scams. How come I have a clean record? How come, according to the law, I have I have absolutely a clean record? I've never been convicted of any crime. How do you explain that? How do you explain that I have never been convicted of any crime? Everyone keeps calling me a, a scam artist. I, every single combat, I'm a scam artist, I'm a fraudster, yet in the eyes of the law, I have never committed any crime. So is it that kind of weird? Bro, once again with this thing with Pennsylvania, there was no crime committed. I don't know how many more times I have to go over this. It's like I must have made a, a, a million videos on this. I must have answered a million questions. And no matter how many times I explain this, you all keep bringing it up. I'll explain it again. Okay. I was a young guy. I ready. I was reading The Art of the Deal. You know the book by Donald Trump? And I said to myself, I could do this. I could do this. I could I could build a casino. Okay. So what I did, okay, was this. I found 110 acres of oceanfront land. This was in uh the Caribbean. This was in the United States. For some reason, the SEC, they categorized it as Vegas. It was that I don't know. I still to this day don't know why they did this. It was in the Caribbean, the Caribbean the United States Virgin Islands. I put together a bunch of money with friends and family. I got an option on land. It was 110 acres of oceanfront, beachfront land that was zoned for a hotel casino development. We had the option on the property. Now check this out. Through a friend of mine, I met one of, I think he was the, the most successful real estate developer in Miami, Florida. I cannot mention his name without his consent, okay? He decided to be a partner of this project. He was going to put up $50 million to build a hotel casino in the Caribbean. Now, I was going to retain a 25% interest in this project. What this guy told me to do, Rich, try to find other investors so that this way I don't have to put up the whole 50 million. Maybe you can find somebody to put up 10 million. Maybe you can find somebody to put up 20 million. So what happened was I started calling developers, real estate developers throughout the country. I started in the state of Pennsylvania. I called up this very, very large, okay? I'm not going to mention his name either, okay? I called up a very large real estate developer in Pittsburgh. And I sent them over my business plan. I explained to him that we're looking for investors to build a hotel casino in the Virgin Islands. Now, I was a young guy. I was an ambitious guy. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't understand rules and regulations of the Securities Exchange Commission. Okay. So apparently, here's what happened, right? This real estate developer called up the Securities and Exchange Commission saying, look, this guy, Richie Lavoie, called me up. He solicited me for an investment in a hotel casino. Okay. Is he registered? Is he a broker dealer with the SEC? The SEC said, no, he's not. He is not registered as a broker dealer. Okay. So what happened was I received a letter in the mail from the Securities and Exchange Commission. They sent me what's called a cease and desist letter. They also sent it to my partner in Florida. They sent him a cease and desist letter. The reason they sent me a cease and desist letter 
There was no refunds, uh, Michael. We didn't collect any money. The only money that was collected was from my friends and family. And, and all of my friends and my family got refunded. All of them got their money back. Okay. I never actually got any money from this guy who was this big Florida developer. He was just considering, he was considering putting up $50 million. <coughs> Excuse me. Ult ultimately, he didn't put up a dime. He winded up deciding he didn't want to do it. Also, it's the same thing with this Pittsburgh uh, developer. He didn't put up any money, but he was the one who alerted the SEC, okay? Because I called him up, I sent him out a business plan explaining that I was soliciting him for an investment in a casino hotel in the Caribbean, okay? The, the, the SEC sent me a letter, and, they, and that was another thing. They sent the Florida developer a letter. It's called a cease and desist letter. They told me to stop it. They said, do not contact anyone else. Do not solicit this idea to anybody else. You are not registered with the SEC as a broker dealer. So, Michael, let me tell you exactly what happened. I agreed to all of this. Are you ready? I stopped soliciting the investment. I was issued no fines, Michael. I was issued no fines. I did not serve any jail time. I don't have a blemish on my record. So why do people keep bringing this up for? I just, I don't know. I just don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand why people continue to bring up this SEC thing. It's like, for the past two years, I have explained to all of you, I got no fines from the SEC. I did not get in any trouble with the SEC, but yet it's like you keep bringing it up and bringing it up and bringing it up. I see it in the comment sections. People keep saying the SEC issued Richie Lavoy a cease and desist letter. I keep reading it. You have no idea. Every hater keeps bringing this up, right? Now, I got in absolutely no legal trouble, not a blemish, not a blemish on my record. Now, let's talk about Lou. <laughs> okay. Can we can we talk about Lou now? Okay. Lou stole. You don't, you don't even break this guy's balls. You break my balls every single minute of every single day. Lou actually, in reality, stole $73,000 from innocent senior citizens. Lou was actually, listen to me, arrested for fraud, okay? He was actually arrested in the Dominican Republic. Lou went to jail. According to court documents, he was tortured. Are you listening to me? He was tortured in jail. Now, let me repeat that word to you. Tortured. And because he was tortured in jail, the judge gave him an early release. Okay. So you're going to compare somebody like me who has no blemish on his record, never committed a crime, to a guy like Lou, who stole $73,000. And, and you want to know what the funny thing is? I'm going to make all of you laugh, right? Do you know how Lou paid back the $73,000 that he stole? We paid it back. The AMC apes gave Lou $73,000, and I'm going to tell you how. Because he told the judge, Lou, I am completely and utterly broke. I don't own any assets. I don't own a house. I don't own a car. I cannot afford to pay back the $73,000. Lou also went a step further. I can't afford the interest. I can't afford the interest on the $73,000. They then sentenced Lou to three years supervision where he has to live with his mommy. Okay. A friend of mine who knows the area, because this is all public record. 
told me that the complex that Lou's mother lives in is a, it's section eight. It's section eight. Now I'm going to say it's alleged because this was information that was provided to me. I cannot validate if it's true or not, but through, through one of my sources, Lou lives allegedly in a section eight complex. Now, if we also analyze Lou, he was in a basement one time in a hospital. Who remembers this? Who remembers the basement where it looked like Freddy Friggin Kruger's dungeon? Okay. This is where Lou gets his medical treatments. Apparently, Lou says, I lost all of my medical records, even though they're online. They're online. I lost all my medical records. Okay. What is all of this telling you? We never see Lou eat gourmet dinners. We never see Lou drive cars. Remember how Lou says, oh, I have two Teslas. I have a Porsche. Okay. We never see, we only see Lou walking and we only see Lou on the subway. That's all we ever see. Okay. Lou claims that he had secret connections that were giving him insider information on AMC. Lou claims there was going to be a squeeze on March 3rd. Lou claims that there's going to be a managed event, a managed event in AMC, right? You know what Lou did? Lou shut his channel down. Lou shut his channel down. You want to know? I want you to think about this. Lou had over 80,000 subscribers. Lou had over 73 million views and he shut his channel down. You want to know why he did that? Because he never had a disclaimer and he knew that his ass was going right back into prison. Okay. So can, can all of you do me a favor? Okay. That you keep breaking my balls. I don't have a criminal record. I don't have a blemish on my record. If you want to start calling people a con man, if you want to start calling people a hustler, if you want to start calling people a criminal, why don't you go to Lou? He's the fucking criminal. He's the fucking con man. Not me. Okay? Get your facts straight. Get your facts straight. I donated out of my own money. You talk about running GoFundMe scams? Okay. I donated over $10,000 of my own money to help our eight brothers and eight sisters in need. I had a guy call me up one time, Marco. I was sitting down having a porterhouse steak. He says, hey, father, I hate the asses of you. I'm starving. I'm watching you enjoy that delicious porterhouse steak. My family has not eaten in days. I sent him $250. I said, you go take your family out for a steak dinner on the Ape Father. I had a guy, C. Diddy, his house burned down. His wife was pregnant. His mother died. I sent him money. I had a guy, John Griffin, who's not related to Ken Griffin. Ape Father, I can't afford a hotel. I'm sleeping in my car. I don't know what I'm going to do. I sent him money. Okay. This wasn't like a 501c charity. This wasn't a tax write-off where I could claim this. This was just free money I gave away. Over the course of over two years, I have donated over $10,000 of my own money. The only reason why they shut down my GoFundMe page was because GoFundMe asked me, they sent me this questionnaire, right? They said, who exactly is the beneficiary of this GoFundMe page. So what I wrote them was, I want to donate money to multiple, multiple people. We're called the AMC Apes. We're retail investors. A lot of them are down money on AMC. A lot of them are struggling. I said, I want to help people nationwide and worldwide. GoFundMe informed me that this was against their code of conducts. You cannot donate to multiple people, groups of people. They told me that this was not allowed. They shut down my GoFundMe page. 
they refunded what I, I think it was like I raised forty three hundred dollars. They refunded the forty three hundred dollars to the apes that initially made that contribution. Now you want to hear what a good guy I am? I get no credit for nothing. You want to hear the good guy I am? All the people who got refunded. Now what the deal was, they had to make a fifty dollar donation that I was going to use to help our ape brothers and our ape sisters. They had to make a $50 donation and I was going to send them an Ape Father t-shirt. Guess what the Ape Father did? Despite the fact that GoFundMe shut my, my GoFundMe page down, despite that fact that they refunded the $4,300, I did not receive one single penny of that money from GoFundMe. Guess what the A father did? I still purchased 100 t-shirts. I mailed out 100 t-shirts to every person that got refunded. Okay, I did that on the house. It cost me, okay, $2,500 to do that. Do you understand me? $2,500. For me to print out 100 t-shirts and to mail them out. I did that for free. I did that out of the goodness of my heart. Then all of you people say I try to I make money off the apes. Remember that time when I was doing the protest and I wanted to do the big blow up gorilla? Okay, so here's what happened, right? I bought the gorilla. I bought it. It was coming from Japan. I spent $600 on the gorilla. So what I said was, you know, I asked the apes. I said, can you help me, you know, pay for this gorilla? Here's what happened. On God, I sold five T-shirts. Five T-shirts. Okay, and I decided because New York City told me I was not allowed to have this big, enormous, gigantic blow-up gorilla. They said it was like a whole process. I had to get a million dollars insurance. I had to file all this shit. They wanted me, it was like a, a whole process that they wanted. It was too complicated. It was too complicated. I winded up selling the gorilla. I got rid of it, the blow-up gorilla. The people who gave me, who bought five t-shirts from me. I called them up. I, they got t-shirts, by the way. I mailed them the t-shirts. And in some cases, because I felt bad, I mailed them like two t-shirts, three t-shirts. In other words, I gave them a few of them for free. Like one of the people, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who it was. One of the people, I call him the Ape Whisperer. <laughs> He's my brother, Cam. Okay. He was one of the people who bought a t-shirt for me. I asked him, I said, Cam, look, I'm selling the gorilla. I'm not going to use it for my protest. I asked him, do you want your money back? Not only did he not want his money back, he sent me a picture that he was wearing the T-shirt proudly. He was at a Philadelphia Eagles game, and he was wearing the Ape Father T-shirt. So the five people who bought T-shirts for me said, Ape Father, we love you. We want to keep our T-shirts. Don't worry about the blow-up gorilla. Do you know every single day of my life, all of these haters break my balls. That's all they do. They said, you took money for the blow-up gorilla. What, what money did I take? What, what money did I take? I sold five T-shirts of people who wanted to keep their t-shirts and they wear it proudly. They wear it proudly. Kyle, Kyle Rich, Kyle Rich out in, uh, in California. He said, Hey father, I gave him a t-shirt for him and for his family. They, they sent me pictures. They wear the t-shirt proudly. Matter of fact, it goes a step further. Kyle Rich loves me so much. He bought me. You ever see that I wear that shirt? Uh, the, the California hamburger place. 
in an in and out burgers. He bought me that shirt. Kyle Rich bought me that in and out hamburger shirt. Okay. So the reason why I'm saying all of this to you is that all of these haters are trying to make me look like I'm a con man. I never did nothing except help people. I never did anything but be good-hearted. Sam the Great. Whatever, this guy's always breaking my balls. There's just a lot of hate here. I'm just reading all these comments. It's a lot of hate. My wife understands me, this guy, this Mabaluki, a life lugs. My wife understands that even if I ran a business like this, where there would be women dressed up as Amazon goddesses, that she understands it's just a business. It's just a business, man. That's it. She understands it. So I'm not here to please you, Mother Effa. If my wife is okay with it, my wife is okay with it, okay? And my wife is okay with it. So I'm not here to please you. Your opinion means as much to me as the toilet paper I use to wipe my ass, okay? So that's the bottom line, okay? Um, with that said, I'm going to end the live stream now. I've been doing this for about an hour and almost a half. And this whole entire live stream consists of hate. But what you don't understand is at the end of the day, I keep accumulating views. I keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger on YouTube. I'm approaching 7.1 million views. So keep hating me. Before you know it, I'm going to be at 10 million views, 20 million views, a hundred million views, a billion views. <laughs> so you all keep hating me. And like I said, one year from now, let's do a little comparison. Let's see where your life is versus my life. I'm serious. I'm actually going to make a video about this right now. And uh, I like to see all you haters if you actually do it. I like to see you film a video of the current house you live in, the current car you drive, what type of money you have to your name, which, like, here's an example, like that guy Dale, RuPaul Dale. He can't even make a video. He could only afford one fish sandwich. You know, when you go to McDonald's, you get, like, the combo meal. Dale can't afford the combo meal. He can only afford one single fish sandwich. He can't afford French fries, and he can't afford a soda. Okay, and he's calling me the broke father. I'm the bro. I eat out every night, four four hundred dollar dinners. That's another thing. People make fun of me that I like to go to Chili's and Applebee's. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I spent six hundred dollars on Easter dinner at Zato's. I just went to the Old Causeway. I went two two times in the last three days to the Old Causeway Steakhouse and Oyster Bar, of which I spent about $500. Plus the tips. If you add the tips, it's probably seven to $800. Okay. So I see nothing wrong with once in a while if I want to eat Big Macs, if I want to eat Burger King, if I want to eat Wendy's, if I want to eat Applebee's. But, but, but people have this concept. They're like, oh, you go to Applebee's, you're poor. You're broke. Like American Dream just made a video on this. American Dream made a video because I, I went to uh, I, I went to Chili's. Excuse me. I went to Chili's with my wife. She was not, She was in the mood for it. I took her to an early an early dinner. 
And American Dreams point is because I went to Chili's, I'm broke. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I like to tell them, this is what I like to tell American Dream. Okay. American Dream, if you're watching this, tally up all of my receipts from the last 30 days of my life of all the restaurants that I ate at and all the money I spent in the last 30 days. American Dream, just the money I spent alone on food in the last 30 days has got to, it's got, it's got to trump $10,000. Okay. You don't even have that money invested anymore. The, the guy's broke. The guy has no money. It's got they get nothing. He's making fun that I took my wife to Chili's. I spent about $10,000 the last month. Now, now, now let me make this clear to all of you. The $10,000 I spent was not on bills. It was not on my mortgage. It was not on, you know, important things in life, right? It was on entertainment, food. That's what I spent $10,000 on, food, okay? And this guy, this Baba Luke, American Dream, wants to make a video that because I took my wife to Chili's today, apparently I'm going bankrupt. That's what he said, I'm going bankrupt. All right, from what I understand, I don't know. He's claiming that he's going to jail. I don't know if none of this is true. American dream. He's begging everybody to pay for a $3,000 fine. I have no idea what this fine is. I think it was for indecent exposure or something that he did somewhere in a public place. Again, all of this is alleged. The guy is begging for $3,000. He says he's going to go to jail. I don't know. Listen. He's good. This guy is the one criticizing me. He's <laughs> he's he's criticizing me. Uh, it's the joke of the century. But again, I'll say it's alleged. So I'm going to be ending this live stream now. V for victory. Peace out. This live stream is not financial advice. I'm not a financial planner. This live stream and all my live streams and all my videos for entertainment purposes only. God bless.